Hello guys, and welcome back to another cold episode. On today's episode, as you can tell by the title and the thumbnail, we are going to be going over the combos for wind-ups. Now, why is that the case? Well, currently in Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel, wind-up Zenmeity is coming up off of the list to three. Now, granted, I don't think it needed to come from two to three. Honestly, it should go the other way because... Well, we'll discuss that in a second, but windups have a wide variety of combos due to the fact that their generic Zen Maity is able to get basically an infinite amount of materials onto your side of the field to go for just about anything. As you can see here, there are a lot of different options that we can go for, and I will discuss those in a second. But first and foremost, we got to discuss the actual cards in the deck. Now, first and foremost, we are going to start with Zenmeity, the Heart and Soul, a generic rank 3 monster that once per turn, not a hard once per turn, you can detach an NXZ material to special summon a windup from your hand or deck. This is absolutely insane because with the right extenders, you are able to basically go into an infinite amount of materials as I previously mentioned, which is pretty good if you ask me being able to just make whatever you want is kind of insane so let's quickly discuss the cards that you are summoning uh the rest of the windups so we have a windup shark which is able to special summon itself from the hand if a windup is summoned to your side of the field and it can modulate its level either to a5 or a3 very useful for getting a another zenmeity next up we have rat which can special summon a monster from the graveyard by switching itself to defense position that's it just Switch it to defense position, special summon a monster. This is incredibly powerful on top of the fact that it is also um, not once per turn. Also, uh, basically just assume that the windups don't have a hard once per turn. That's it. Just If they don't have a hard once per turn, there you go. Also, this one just straight up doesn't have a once per turn. So if you can switch it to attack position, you could also then switch it back to defense and get another material onto your side of the field. Why is that the case? I don't know. Anyway, then we have Wind Up Magician, which is absolutely insane because it's specials from the deck as long as you activate another Wind Up effect, which is not hard. It's really not. You normal summon Wind Up Magician, you special summon Shark, and then you can activate Shark, which then triggers the Wind Up Magician, which then can special summon a Shark or another Wind Up Magician. Yes, you can summon a Wind Up Magician off of Wind Up Magician. Why is this the case? Don't know. Also, we have a Wind Up Rabbit in here because it's a three and a nine and, and a name for Wind Ups. So there you go. As for the rest of the deck, just a whole bunch of level three extenders and there are a myriad of them. So first and foremost, we have Junk Forward, just a free special. We have Gallus, which is really good in monster mash heavy styles of the deck. Um, the higher monster count that you have, the more likely this is going to resolve and actually special summon itself. Um, so that's pretty nice. Hence why we're playing things like Seca's Light and uh, a low spell count. We have Dangers. Obviously, the Tsuchinoko and the Jackalopes are very powerful as well, being able to draw you a card, while more importantly, getting themselves onto the field pretty consistently. Even if they are hit, they are able to special summon a monster, which is very, very nice. Then, of course, we have the Psychic Wielder and Psychic Trackers. Um, and then we have also Gen X Ally Birdman, which for some reason is currently, I think, limited to two in Master Duel. I don't know why that's the case, but... Honestly, yeah, this could probably come to three. Um, and then we have the Speedroid Terror Top, which is a card, and Takatomborg. Tak Takatomborg is interesting because um, you can actually special summon it like midway through your combo because Digusto Emerald happens to be a wind. So you could just like randomly get another material onto your side of the field. It's kind of cool. Um, you could play this at more copies, but then it becomes kind of a brick because you do need specifically a wind, which isn't all that common. For some reason, uh, Gen X Ally Birdman is not a wind. Anyway, uh, next up, we have ourselves just some generic tech cards, uh, Ash Blossom and Max C. Pretty standard, right? Just max out on these. Don't really need much more to say. Uh, Max C ends turns. Ash Blossom is good at stopping Max C, which is like your biggest threat. Uh, and since we're not playing called by, since we're playing Sekka's Light, we need as many of these as we can get. Next up, we have Artifact Scythe, because we're scythe locking um, with the Dagda stuff. Uh, we'll discuss that in a second. We also have DPE in here. And yes, even under Sekka's Light, you are still able to make DPE because of Verte. Yes, Verte just sends the card for cost and copies its effect. It's not actually utilizing the effect of the card, so you can still use it under Sekka's Light. And yes, you can also use Scythe under Sekka's Light because it's a monster once it gets destroyed. Yeah, there you go. Um, we have the two best materials for the uh, for the Fusion Destiny being Dasher and Disc Commander. Um, you could say like, oh, 
like Mali and Denier are better. Here's why they're not in this situation. Um, one, we are playing a very high monster count, so Dasher is almost always live. Two, we want the best two cards because any more bricks us a little bit more and we want as few bricks as possible. So even just playing four is a little bit much. Um, but yeah, so there's that. You just kind of want as few brick cards as you can get. You just want all gas, which is also why we're playing very few hand traps. Um, now, granted, you can change this up and we'll discuss that in a second. Uh, but yeah, then we also have Sekka's Light. So one thing I do want to mention with this is, as I mentioned previously, we basically want as much gas as we can. As many level 3 extenders as we can get, because if one Zen Maity gets stopped, having the ability to go into another one is really, really good for us. And uh, that means that if like someone ashes us and we get another one, even if that gets impermed, we can actually still continue our combos most of the time, or at the very least end on something like DPE, which sometimes is enough, right? Uh, so it's not the greatest if we do end up getting stopped, but at the very least, uh, having access to more level threes gives us more materials, which could then be used for more plays. Um, so yeah, there's that. Um, that's also why we're not playing many hand traps or many tech cards in that case. However, let's just do the extra deck um, and show you what I personally have been playing. But one thing to mention is that because of the generic nature of windups and specifically Zen Maity, basically you can go into just about anything. So let's quickly discuss the rest of the cards that we are playing. So we have the Zen Maity. We also need one Zen Maintenance. This is very important. Um, when it is summoned, if this card is Link Summoned, you can add a windup card from your deck to your hand. This also triggers things like Magician to special summon another monster, which is very nice, which would then trigger like a shark that you search. Very nice overall. Also, you can banish a face-up wind-up monster you control face down to special another one of the same name from deck. This is really good for getting an additional rat into rotation. So you use rat uh, to special summon a monster from the grave uh, by putting it to defense position, and then you banish the rat and special another one from the deck in face-up attack position to do it again. Uh, very good overall, uh, but yeah, the search is very valuable, and it's a link to, which means that you can actually just set, send the Zen Maedies to the grave in order to go into this. Then we have Emerald to shuffle back the Zen Maedies, as well as uh, to shuffle back other such material that we may need, like for example, a random Destiny hero that we happened to draw, or something like Scythe, or what have you, right? Um, lots of really good advantage that we have here, and since we have a lot of level 4s with the Magicians and the Wind-Up Sharks, uh, we have easy access to this. Next up, we also have Bahamut Shark, because guess what? Wind-Up Shark is a water! Why is this the case? I don't know. But this allows us to make Toad, which is very, very good. Toad is just an Omni Negate. You love to see him. Um, then we have, obviously, the DPE package with the Verte and DPE, pretty standard stuff, and then of course Dagda to Scythelock our opponent. So normally we'll go into Verte as well as Dagda, we'll activate the the, uh, the Verte to get the Scythe, and then we'll summon out the DPE and pop the Scythe. Then we have Utopic Draco Future as well as Utopic Future. You can go into the Utopic Future with the Bahamut Shark as well as the Emerald, which allows us to then go into the Utopic Draco Future. This card is like a death sentence to so many decks. There are so many decks that just straight up do not have an out to this card. It's crazy. Um, so yeah, just having this is very good. Uh, then of course, Zeus. We're playing a lot of Xyz. Why not play Zeus? And then for the last materials that we have, we have our OTK engine with Nightmare Unicorn and Access Code, and then of course, Apollosa to end out our field. So this is what I have been playing recently. However, there are a wide variety of different things that you can play. For example, you can play Aurora Dawn. Why is this the case? Well, if you didn't notice, there's one thing that all of the wind-up extra deck monsters have. A little, a little type that they have, that they all share. They're all machines. Which means if you get the right materials onto your side of the field, as well as you get into potentially another windup, like say for example, I don't know what other, uh, I know that there's another machine in here somewhere. Um, yeah, like Zen may, is there, is there a machine? There may not actually be a machine. Ah, yeah. You can play like windup bat, right? You can play like a windup bat or something along those lines uh, as kind of like a pseudo brick. And then you just summon it and, and, and then you can go over it on. Why is this the case? I don't know. But yeah, you can go Aurora Dawn and then do the whole Aurora Dawn line. So 
there's that, you know, with the Danglong with the worms and stuff like that. This is a little bit more bricky, but it ends on a way more powerful board because you can also search out your nine pillars along with like Cupid pitch and stuff like that. Um, or if you don't want to do that, you could even go for Union Carrier and Borload Savage instead. I think this is probably a little bit better than what I'm currently playing because specifically against a lot of decks, there are... Um, like having a negate is a little bit more valuable having a negate for things like um like runic or other such like flood floodgate type decks is very nice um however with borload savage you're not able to actually get a good negate uh which isn't great uh but if you can go into like baron or something along those lines that's probably going to be a little bit better um so yeah there's that and then of course you can uh, lock your opponent with the Buster Drake lock because that's available too in Master Duel because Union Carrier is a card. And then, of course, you could also just go Cherubini to dump yourselves an Adventure card and then you can go for the whole Adventure Engine line, which is also something that you could do, which also ends on another Negate. So, again, lots of other ways to put up more interaction. Uh, and then, of course, if you don't want to play the Sekas Light, for example, like you're playing the uh, Adventure Engine, you're playing maybe the Nine Pillars or something along those lines, you can play things like Pot of Desires, you can play uh, Called By, Cross Out. Now, one thing I do want to mention, I don't think it's worth it to play the Infip, to play uh, other such things, unless you are playing cross out, which again, I'm not even really a fan of. It's just better to have as much gas as you can get. Yes, it is nice to have more outs to max C, but honestly, sometimes you just scoop and you're like, all right, you got the max C, that's fine, like whatever. Um, also, don't try and play through max C, you just, you just won't win. It's just not going to happen. Um, now, one thing to note, outside of all of this, you kind of just lose to Nibiru. If the Nibiru is played well and you have normal summoned, which oftentimes you will, you just kind of lose. There's not much that you can do about that. However, if you have a normal summoned, you could probably still make a pretty competent board. But if you have, yeah, good luck. Anyway, let's hop into the combos and show you how this deck actually works. All right, so the first combo that we want to do, and one of the reasons why I said we want as much gas as possible, is because... Basically, in order to do a combo, you kind of need at least three points of material, specifically three level threes that you can get onto your side of the field. Hence why we have so many available to us with the Gallus, with the uh, uh, the Psychic Wielder, Junk Forward, stuff like that, right? So what we are going to do is we're going to start with the Junk Forward, which will then special summon out our Tracer. Then we can go and Xe both of these into a... Uh into our first Zen Maity. Zen Maity will then be able to activate its effect in order to detach to special summon out another one. And we're going to special summon out a, uh, let's go for a shark here. We're then going to normal summon. Yes, the ash is a three. There's a reason we're playing the ash. We're also going to change this guy's level so that it is now a three. This will then allow us to once again overlay. So we're going to overlay these two and we can go for our second Zen Maity. Zen Maity effect will now activate and we can detach the shark. Make sure it's the shark here because we are going to have to go for a... Uh, actually, no, we can go for magician. It doesn't really matter, I guess, but yeah. Uh, we'll go for the magician here. I could have gone for the rat, which would have allowed us to get another another Zen Maity if you're playing all three, um, but yeah, we're just playing the two. And then we can sync these, not, li not sync, link these off for a Zen Maintenance. Zen Maintenance will trigger here to add a shark to our hand. So we're going to add another shark to our hand, and then this will trigger our wind up Magician, which will special summon out a Magician. This will then allow us to special summon out our shark because a, um, a monster with special summon, which I believe may trigger the wind-up magician. I'm not entirely sure. I think it does because an, uh, an effect was activated. Um, so now we can go for the the uh, second shark. Um, don't go for the, the wind-up magician here because what we can actually do instead is... Uh, yeah, we go for the shark here. Uh, because what we can do instead is we can actually activate the Zen Maintenance in order to go for another um, uh, another wind-up magician. So, yeah. Uh, let's do that. We are going to banish this face down because we've already used it. And then we can go for... Did I say another shark? I meant another magician. Also, note that the magician's special in defense. So we can't actually go for the rat off of the magician. It just doesn't do anything. Um, so yeah, now we have another magician. We can activate the effect of both of these guys to modulate their level, uh, which will also trigger our wind-up magician. Actually, I guess we only need to activate one of them. Um, and then we can grab out the uh, the rabbit. 
So we're going to special summon out the rabbit. I specialed in an attack like the fool. Uh, defense. Move to defense. There we go. <clears throat> so now we can overlay both of these in order to go for a... Uh, oh, sorry. We haven't gone for emerald yet. Sorry. Sorry. That's fine. Uh, we'll just overlay both of these then. Dueling book. And go for Emerald. So now we can go for Emerald, we can detach our material, and we can shuffle back both of the Zenmaeides as well as one of the Sharks. Um, Actually, no, you can keep the Shark. I guess it doesn't really matter. But uh, there we go. And then we would shuffle this... And we get a draw card. So it doesn't really matter what we draw here. Um, but yeah. Then we can go for the Zen Maeity here. So we will overlay it here. And then we can detach again in order to special summon out a rat. We're going to go for the rat here. And out comes rat. Rat effect will activate, changing it to defense. But I, I, wrong button. Changing it to defense position. There we go. Which will then special summon out the shark. Okay, now we have two waters or two sharks on our side of the field, which allows us to go for the Bahamut shark, which is really nice. And then we can go for the, um, we can go for, no, 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 not overlay, my bad. We can go for toad as well. Uh, this then allows us to also overlay both of these. We're gonna detach, detach, and detach in order to go for our utopic as well as our utopic draco future so at this point we now have quite a few negates but honestly our opponent could have nibiru'd ages ago but at the very least we still have a playable hand so what we can do now is we can go for um quite a few things um we don't really have good access to another Zen Maeity, but that's okay. Uh, we can actually go for ourselves the... Uh, we can go for Verte here. Um, since we drew into the Scythe, we can go for the Verte there. Uh, we could also go for the... Um, uh, we can link off these two in order to just go for Dagda, and then we can go and set the Scythe, and then we can go for... Like it, like if we had Fusion Destiny in our hand or something like that, and we can go for the Apollosa. So there are a few more options. It's not the greatest because this is probably one of the worst starting hands. It's just the three materials. But at that point, you probably have like Maxi and Ash in your hand at the very least. If not like Fusion Destiny or you've had Sekka's Light, which you could draw to there, um, which you probably already did. So yeah, that's again why we're playing so low of a count because this is the weakest board that we can make and it still ends on either DPE or uh, Apo. So there's that um, along with the Toad and the Utopic Draco. And then maybe two hand traps. Now, what happens if we have actually good amount of materials? I'll show you. Now, generally, I like to spend my normal on Wind Up Magician if I can. If I can't, that's fine. But normally, that's what I want to do. So first things first, we're actually going to activate the Gallus here, and we are going to dump the first card of uh, uh, the first card from the top of our deck. Happens to be a rat. That's actually pretty good. Just dumping a, a wind-up is very nice for us. Um, but then, now we get two specials on the Gallus. Now, this is very important. If you're playing Gallus, um, you have to play a low count of spells and traps because it it destroys itself if it's not a monster that it that it sends to the graveyard. Um, so, yeah. It is a free special, and it's not once per turn. So, if you want to like bounce this to the hand with something like Gen X Ally Birdman, you can totally do that, and then just activate it again. It's insane. It's really strong, so yeah, that's why we're playing it. Um, but this allows us to go for the Psychic Wielder. I'm also going to now Normal Summon out our Wind Up Magician, and then Tsuchinoko would discard itself and Special Summon it if we had no other cards in hand. Um, but yeah, this card is always going to hit the field. But at this point, we can actually link off, uh, or not link off, uh, overlay both of these guys, uh, or whichever ones, and then go into our first Zen Maeity. Zen Maeity, then... Uh, is able to go into detach a material in order to special summon. So we're going to special summon out the... Uh, we're going to go for the uh, Wind-Up Magician. This will trigger this Wind-Up Magician. It will not trigger this Wind-Up Magician, even though this is technically activating, but like, I don't know why that specifically happens, but it does. Couldn't tell you. Anyway, <clears throat> maybe it does. No, yes. I think it does. 
I think it does trigger if we go for the Zen Maidy here. Anyway, we still need another level three, so we're going to go for the Rat here. So we're going to special summon out the Rat. Um, actually, it probably would be better to go for the Shark. So I'm actually going to put this back to the top of the deck. Sorry, my bad. We're going to go for Shark. There we go. Um, so this will trigger this guy, yes. And then we can also use this guy's effect, boop, in order to go for the second special uh, off of the Wind-Up Magician, which will then get us the other Wind-Up Magician. Um, so we're going to special summon out the other Wind-Up Magician, and then we can also overlay these two in order to make them into uh, Zen Maidy. Zen Maidy can then detach our material here and go for the Rat, since that's the last thing that we really need. Um, this will not trigger this because we just don't have the space for it. But that's okay, because then we can go for... Oh, sorry, hold on. We can then send both of these to the graveyard to link summon our Zen Maintenance. A Zen Maintenance effect will activate and we will search out our shark. Um, so we're going to add the shark to hand. And then this could also trigger the Wind Up Magician. Um, I think we have one shark in deck. Yeah. So we could summon out the shark here as well. Uh, then we can overlay. Uh, 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 it doesn't matter. Uh, we can then overlay in order to go for emerald and emerald effect will shuffle back this guy and this guy and then whichever one you want i like to go for the gallus because again it's just like a free special um whereas we've already summoned the wielder so it's not going to be another free special so yeah we're going to go for this guy um, we're going to put him to the top of the deck we're going to shuffle and then we're going to draw a card uh, okay, Wind Up Rat there is actually pretty bad. Uh, just having it in the deck is a little bit more advantageous. Um, drawing something else is a little bit better. Um, anyway, so now we can go for a... Uh, we can go for the Wind Up Rat, set it to defense, and then we are able to special summon back the Shark. And then again, because we have both of the... Oh, no, no, no. No, no, no. Overlay. Now we have both of those. We can go into Bahamut, which can also go into the Toad. So we're going to go Bahamut. Sorry, I'm skipping a step. Uh, we can go Bahamut, detach, special summon the Toad, and then detach the rest of these materials and overlay these guys in order to go into our Utopic. This is normally what we're ending on. Pretty simple. Right. So we're going to go for the Utopic uh, there. And now we have our Negates, which is very strong. Uh, next up, what we want to do is, uh, okay, so we haven't activated the Zen Maintenance effect here, but I think we only have, I, I actually don't think we have any more rats that we can actually go for. So we happen to get really unlucky going and grabbing this rat here, um, because now we're just kind of like out of luck, uh, cause we also didn't shuffle back a, okay, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna say that instead we actually shuffle back this guy instead of the gallus so we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna put the gallus because that is like incredibly unlucky um that we happen to draw into that and we also had the other one in grave so we're just gonna act as if that strange set of luck just didn't happen because we need at least something that we can go into off of this end maintenance um so we're gonna banish this guy face down for this end maintenance which will allow us to then special summon the uh uh, the wind up magician back, which will then trigger shark. Shark will then special summon itself. We're going to declare it in order to go for another set of our, uh, or another one of our uh, Zen Maidy. So Zen Maidy can then detach and we will special summon from hand the rat. Uh, but at this point, it doesn't really matter. We don't really have any more materials. I mean, I could technically go for rabbit, but honestly, that's just worse. So we are then going to go and send these two to the grave for our uh, Dagda. So we're going to go for the Dagda here. We're going to activate our Rat, which will set this guy, which will also trigger the Dagda, and Dagda will set the Scythe. Uh, so we're going to set that, and then we can special summon out. Uh, there isn't really a point to go for anything in particular. Um... Yeah, so it doesn't really matter at this point what we special summon. Technically, it would be best to go for, like, to go for rats, because then we can go Zen Maity to bring back, the, to bring out the rabbit. But it doesn't really matter, uh, because we're going to go and then link these off, send these to the grave. 
to go for our Appalosa, and then link these off in order to go for Verte, and then activate the Verte, sending our last bit of material, the, uh, this guy, and this guy, and disk commander, which is there. Okay, and then this allows us to special summon out the DPE. So during the opponent's turn, oh, this also has two counters. So during the opponent's turn, during the draw phase, have your chain link on, and then you can activate the effect of your DPE. You're gonna pop this and uh, this, which will then trigger this to special summon, and, uh, and then activate its effect. So now we've scythe locked our opponent. We have a monster negate. We actually have three monster negates and we have uh, toad to also omni negate while also being under Phoenix Enforcer to reduce everything by 400. So they can't just like normal summon something and walk over the apple. Um, so yeah, all things considered, it's not the craziest of hands, but again, that was with, or I should say, that's, that's not the craziest of boards, but um, this is just one of the many boards that you could potentially go into. Um, Honestly, that's kind of all that you're looking to do. It's pretty simple. Now, I'm going to show a few cases where, like, if you get hand trapped, what can you do? So let's go over those. All right. So let's say your first Zen Maidy gets stopped. Can't play through it. Uh, or, sorry, uh, your opponent, like, ashes it or imperms it. Now, granted, if you still have the necessary materials to go and make another one, it really does simplify itself. Um, yes, you're technically moving or working with one less um, thing, but the the thing is, with this deck, um, like, a single wind-up magician just kind of gets you everything that you need. From this point, it's the exact same combo. It's the same thing that we just did, right? So even that one Ash Blossom, as long as you have the necessary materials, which, again, this is why we're playing so much gas, you're probably fine, right? So any way to get two rank threes and you basically do the combo even through one interruption. Now, what happens if they ash you here and you don't get the ability to get your wind up magician, right? Well, that's where things get a lot more hand dependent, right? If, for example, we were able to go and resolve a danger and we discarded something that we say didn't need and we ended up drawing a card that we say did, it becomes pretty interesting, right? Oh, now we have a wind-up magician, so we can actually just normal summon this and then go for the same combo, right? Nothing changed. Cool. E even though we technically didn't have the combo and, and, and they stopped us, you know, hey, we had the wind-up magician, we get to go, right? Now, if our hand isn't as good, right? Say, for example, this isn't a wind-up magician, but instead it's a junk forward, right? We had an extra junk forward to our name. Well, okay, maybe we've already used up our normal, right? And we just have this junk forward. Okay, there's not really a whole lot that we can do. Yeah, you just make Verite. You just make Verite and you end on DPE. It's pretty simple. If your opponent has interrupted you twice, yeah, there's not a whole lot that we can do. Yes, we could also potentially go and uh, exe both of these in order to go for a utopic Draco future. Um, but... I'm not as big of a fan of that because it uh, it sticks specifically the Zenmaides underneath these guys, uh, which makes it a lot more difficult for you to like emerald them back. Um, so you'd kind of just be sitting on this, but it is an option. If you know potentially what your opponent is on, like for example, I don't know, you, you stopped them with like a hand trap or something like that. And now you can see, oh, they're on like blue eyes or what have you. Yeah, you can decide whether to go for uh, Utopic Draco or DPE. But honestly, it's just better to link these off. Keep the access to, uh, like, an Emerald if you need to. Um, it's just a little bit better. Also, DPE dumping the materials for uh, for Fusion Destiny, specifically in the uh, Dasher, as well as the... Um, where is it? Uh, the Disk Commander makes things very nice, because... Uh, where is it? Where? Why can I not find Disk Commander? Hello? There he is. Um, it's very nice because then you can bring back the uh, DPE and then you normally get the special summon as well off of Dasher unless you're getting like a Sucka's Light, which then is just a free plus too. So who cares? You know? Um, but yeah, normally you're just like Dasher out your thing and then you can now normal summon this and then you can go for like maybe 
another Zen Maity, which you may not have or what have you, but uh, you could go for another Link to, you could go for Dagda there, which could then trigger um, the Scythe, which now you have Scythe. So hopefully that made sense as to why we go for Verte if we are, have been negated twice, which is fairly uncommon. They normally have to have both Ash and Imperm, which does happen, but I mean, honestly, at that point, it's more of a simplified game state and you're just kind of hoping that they don't have a Kaiju. <laughs> All right, so I have crafted a truly almost unplayable hand, right? This is quite frankly one of the worst hands that you could ever get with this. Triple Maxi. Whatever else is in this hand kind of doesn't matter. I specifically chose these two for a reason though, and I'll get into that in a second. But Triple Maxi alone is one of the worst hands that you can get. That's it. Everything else is gas. Everything else is at least something, right? Even if you were to draw um, the 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 scythe or the um, the dasher or something along those lines, they're potentially another monster, which could help you at least do something, right? Um, uh, especially like if you draw scythe, right? Uh, at the very least, you can set that, make verite, and then pop it and scythe lock your opponent. You're getting something. Um, I guess like Dasher and, and, uh, Disc Commander as well are, are pretty bad, but, uh, this is very similar. But, one thing that you can do, most notably, is for, no, no, not what I wanted, is you can actually just go and, uh, specifically with this, with Gen X Ally Birdman, you can special summon out something like Gallus, or, uh, there are a few other things. Uh, I think it's actually just Gallus that this really works with because it doesn't take up your normal. Um, but you could, like, special summon the junk forward and do a very similar thing. Um, but now we can go for the Gen X Ally Birdman, which allows it to special summon itself by bouncing this guy. So we're going to bounce this guy back to the hand. And then we can go for the Gallus again. So we're going to... Mill a card. Okay, it's like a Gwilder. Cool, cool, cool. Fantastic. Um, this now allows us to get into Zen Maity. So even with a, a more or less unplayable hand, we now get to go and go for Zen Maity. Go and go for... Uh, we now get to go for Zen Maity, which then allows us to potentially get another material. Now, granted, we kind of got a little bit unlucky with our mills, but not too terribly unlucky. So I can't be too upset about that. Um, but now we can go for, uh, let's say... I guess it doesn't really matter because at this point we're just kind of making Verte in passing. Uh, yeah. So we're going to go for Magician because I feel like it's the worst thing to draw. And then we're just going to sink these off. We're just going to link these off. And make Verte. You know, Verte should probably be banned. But all things considered, these are very rare occurrences, right? And if this happens, you're kind of just done. I don't know. It's not a whole lot that you can do. Gen X Ally Birdman does have a lot of really interesting applications, so that's also very nice. Um, but yeah, most of the time, you're having a little bit more that you can do. All right, just one real quick thing. We're going to do some test hands in a second, but Takatan Borg can, special, can be special summoned if you control any of these guys. Um, it's just a free special, and since it's not a trigger effect, uh, your opponent can't respond with, like, a max C or something along those lines. So, yeah, you just get the free special. Um, just, yeah. Also, Terror Top, there, there's a reason it's that one. Uh, it's just a free Zen Maity, like, by itself. You summon the Terror Top, you activate its effect, you search out Takatan Borg, you special the Takatan Borg, boom, Zen Maity. There's a reason it's limited to one. It's just that good. Um, yeah, but that's all. I just wanted to be like, oh yeah, like midway through your combo, you can just also special summon the Taka Tomboard. So don't feel pressured into like normal summoning it or um, getting it along with anything else. Um, you could also play more of this, but it's again, a little bit bricky because it only is an extension through the combo. Um, and you do need like Terror Top or another Taka Tomboard to special summon it. So it's not great. Um, but yeah. Those are just, that's the last little bit of thing that I mentioned. And you can basically use any level three extender that you so choose. Um, you could play more trackers and wielders if you wanted to. You could play, uh, in, instead of Gallus, you could play like more Gen X Alley Birdman. You could play um, other such level threes. You could play even more wind up rabbits and stuff like that. But whatever level three extender you want. So uh, let's do some test hands. I'm not going to do too many because. This deck is very straightforward. Like that one combo that I showed you is just like, that's what you do every time, right? Pretty simple. 
Okay, so here's the test. I I swear I shuffled the deck. I, I clicked the button. We drew Terror Top and Takatom board. Kind of funny. Um, but obviously, first and foremost, Sekka's Light. Sekka's Light is also really good because of the fact that it uh, baits out Ash Blossom. Like, they are just going to Ash this. Otherwise, it's just a draw two. Why am I... In, what, it's a draw two. It's not a search. Um, that's funny. <clears throat> so that goes to Grave. Also... We can go and activate the Sekka's Light to shuffle back Scythe. I don't really think that's worth it, um, especially with a hand like this. So we're just going to freely special summon this, which will then also freely special summon out this guy. And then we can go and overlay for the first of our uh, Zen Maids. This will also trigger our Windup Shark, so that will special summon itself. And then we can detach a material and we can special summon out our Magician, which will then also trigger another Shark, which will then also trigger our... Uh, bu -bu 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 magician to summon out another magician, which will then trigger our. Uh, well, how do I want to do this? Yeah, let's go and activate the effect here, and we can uh, then activate this magician, and we can go for a another magician. Yes. And then we are going to go and uh, send this guy and this guy for a uh, Zen Maintenance, which will then trigger the, or sorry, which will then search the Shark, which will then trigger the Wind-Up Magician. Actually, have I normaled? I haven't normaled. Never mind. Hold on. Put that back to the top of the deck. We're going to grab Rat. We're going to grab the rat to hand, because this will trigger our magician to special summon out the third shark. And then at this point, I think you understand what is going to happen. Uh, we're going to normal summon the rat. We're going to go for the whole uh, the whole line, but we're also going to go for Emerald and for the um, Bahamut shark. We can shuffle back the one Zen Maity as well as maybe like uh, a wind-up magician and a shark. And then we can go for the rat and we can go and yada yada. I think you get it, right? I hope you get it. Um, we're ending on the same board as we always do, except this time we don't have to go through Dagda, so we can actually make a three material Apo on top of everything else. Great. What is this hand? Um, I would say it does it, but all it does is make DPE with two hand traps. That's all it does. It's like it. We don't even have to go Zen Maity to do this. We can. We can go Zen Maity. But, like, this hand actually just surprisingly doesn't do it. I I have never gotten this bad of a hand in Master Duel. That That's not true. I've gotten one. I've gotten it once. Like, legitimately once. I can count it on my finger. There it is. Um, Yep, that's it. Okay, cool. All right, this is a hand. <laughs> an actual hand uh we're gonna normal summon this which will special summon out this uh which i believe triggers this which we can then use to special summon out this guy which i don't know if this one triggers this i think it does i think it does yeah i think i've had this happen before in master duel which is why i'm like i'm pretty sure this is how this works which will then allow us to go for our magician yay Yay. Okay, so then we are going to go for... Uh, we did normal. We normaled at the Wind-Up Magician. So we are going to go for our... Uh, yeah, we're going to go and declare both of these guys to become threes. We're going to overlay them. We're going to go for Zen Maity. We're going to go and detach you in order to special summon out our uh, rat. And then we can go and uh, link off. Oh, actually. Hold on. No, uh, uh, not what I wanted. Not what I wanted. Uh, blah, 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 blah. There we go. I was going to put it in an extra monster zone because this would also allow me to go for the wind up magician here, which would then special summon out the last copy of Shark. So we can then go. For that. And then we can link off these two for a Zen maintenance, which will then trigger to add. Uh, oh, actually. Better plan. Before we do that. 
Let's go for Emerald. Sorry, sorry. Uh, let's go Emerald. And, oh, wait. No, because that doesn't do anything. Because we don't get a shuffle back to Zen Mei. I lied. Nope, nope. We're, we're, we're doing this. Yep. Uh, we're going to go and just add to the hand a rabbit. Um, okay. Then we can go for the emerald. Forgot Zen Mei wasn't in grave. It's fine. It's fine. Uh, yeah. Then we can shuffle back one. Uh, two. Where is it? There we go. Two and three. Top of deck. There we go. And then we can go for our rat. And at this point, I think we all know where this is going. We go Bahamut. We go uh, Toad. We go Utopic Draco. Uh, we can then go Jackalope, which is going to get us another material onto our side of the field, which then gets us another Zen Maity, which then gets us another rat. Yada yada. We go and continue and get infinite material. You get the combo, right? I, I hope at this point it makes sense. So I know I didn't go over the Aurora Dawn stuff and all of that, uh, that we could have potentially gone over. And Dear Lanta, looking at this from a TCG perspective, is disgusting. Um, but, yeah. Uh, there, I, I mean, if you know the Aurora Dawn combos from the Halk Aurora Dawn lines, it's very similar. Uh, you go through the Danglong, you just add in the extra bricks that are necessary, which makes it a little bit more inconsistent, which is not necessarily something that I like. You could also do the uh, the uh, Union Carrier instead of going for the uh, Scythe line, which adds just one slight variation um, where you go for the Dragon Buster. And, uh, well, actually, you can't really make this unless you have tuners, so you kind of have to make this through the Aurora Dawn stuff, which uh, adds another brick. Um, but you could take out, like, the Verte, or uh, the DPE stuff, which takes out quite a bit. Um, so, there's that. Uh, and I don't think you need a spell. I guess Nine Pillars, but you don't have to play the spell. Um, you don't even have to go through the Aurora Dawn, or the Danglong stuff. You can actually just go, like, Cupid to Pitch. Um, you could also go for, just, like, hard make the Borload Savage with, uh, with this guy. However, uh, the problem with this is that you can't go for a lot of the link summoning stuff. Um, so do keep that in mind. You can't go like Verte or Dagda. Uh, you can't go for these, but you, you can end on like a, a synchro board if you want. You can also do the water enchantress stuff. Um, but keep in mind again, a lot more bricky. These versions are, are more inconsistent, higher ceilings, lower, uh, l lower floor pretty simple. Um, yeah, that's going to be it. Hope, hopefully this made sense. Uh, wind up is pretty cool and there's a lot that you can do with it, which is why I've been playing it a bunch recently. And, uh, yeah, it's very, very fun. Um, if you like really long combos that just end on nearly unbreakable boards, but lose to Nibiru, then this is the deck for you. Anyway, that's going to be it for, for today. Hopefully you guys didn't enjoy it. If you did, like us very much, so appreciate it. And if you want to check out more content like this, as well as more Yu-Gi-Oh!, then just be sure to subscribe. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching, and remember to always stay frosty. Bye-bye. Shout out to the Frost Guard, my members. Thank you guys so much for the support, and I hope you enjoy the content.